Hi there, I'm Renaud from My Mountains, and today we're going to have a look at springs, what they are, how you can use them to adjust to your game, and how you can use fill to do that very easily. Springs are a big topic. I won't be covering everything today just to keep things short. I'll be showing you the basics, show you the demos, show you two quick ways that you can use to add springs to your game. Then I'll be making more videos on more advanced concepts. So what are springs and why use them? Well, you're probably familiar with the concept of interpolation or twinning or lerping a value over time. So let's take this little dude here. Let's say I want to interpolate its X position from this value to a value over here. If I want to interpolate that position, I'm going to say, well, interpolate over one second and maybe over that specific animation curve. And this is the result. With springs, I won't have to specify a duration. I won't have to specify a destination position. It's like my arm is the spring and I push and it goes back like that, right? And I can also say, well, go from here to here on a spring and it's going to do something like that. So let's look at an actual example right now. So I'm now in Unity and I have two objects, the one on the left, a yellow cube, or I'm going to be moving using an interpolation, the one on the right using a spring. So let's start with the one on the left. I'm using a position feedback going from A to B over 0.5 seconds. And you can see that every time I press play, the cube is going to move over exactly 0.5 seconds using the curve I specified moving from A to B. Complete control over what I'm doing. Um, might be harder, trickier to interrupt that movement, to add to that movement. And so that's the limit of interpolation. If I want to solve for that, I can use a spring. And so with a spring, I can also say, well, I want to move to that specified value and the cube is going to go there. But what's nice with springs is that I can also like bump the value. So let's say I have my object here, I can push it up. So let's do that. If I do bump, you can see that I'm pushing the spring and then it goes back to its initial position like an object attached to a spring, right? And what's very nice about that is that I don't have to wait for the end of the animation uh, to trigger it again. So if I were to spam my bump button, you can see I'm, I'm keeping the object in the air sort of. And now I can play on the springs value. That's going to be the damping and frequency to see how the spring reacts and how it controls the object. To see more about that, we're going to have a look at the springs demo. So we're now in the field springs demo scene. And this is a big scene made of many subsections. It's of course included in field. You can play with it as you want. And it's intended as both a showcase of all the features, but also as like a tutorial on what springs are and what the various damping and frequency values you're going to be dealing with are and what they do. So it starts with this section where we have two buttons. When you press them, a bunch of springs come into action. Uh, if I press that one, we have a position spring that is moving the top of the tree. We have a rotation spring that's rotating it, a squash and stretch spring that is squashing and stretching the uh, entire tree. And this makes the tree, well, alive, right? If we move on to the next scene, we have a movement demo. And you can see that when I press the arrows on my keyboard, the character is moving. Um, I also have a button to randomly pick a direction. All of that is tied to these two values on the spring, the damping and the frequency. And so when I'm going to move these sliders, it's going to impact the damping and the frequency of the spring. The damping is sort of the strength of the spring. If you had a physical spring, it would be how hard that thing is and how when I, when I let the spring go, how hard it goes back. So right now I have a fairly high value. It goes from zero to one. Uh, so it's very rigid. If I were to um, reduce the damping value, you can see that now it's more bouncy than it was with a more extreme value, this is what we get. And the frequency is going to define how many oscillations we have before going back to a resting place for spring. So high frequency, lots of oscillations, low frequency, not many oscillations. This also impacts, as you can see, the speed 
at which the object moves. Moving on, uh, another demo. And this time we have likewise a random move. You can see we're only moving the X position of that object. And this introduces the bump. Uh, the bump is another method you can call on your springs. And this one is not gonna move to a specific destination. It's gonna like nudge, push the object in place, right? And you can specify just a bump amount. And you can see that the higher the bump amount, of course, the uh, bigger the distance the object uh, gets pushed. Same thing, but now on two axes, right? X and Y. I can move randomly and I can bump and I can change the value of that bump. Uh, but this time I have control over the two axes separately. Of course, you could decide that you want unified axis. And so the same damping for X and Y. But if you were to decide to um, go for different values, so let's say something like that, you can see that now I'm moving fairly fast on the Y axis, but very slowly uh, sort of on the X axis. And that can make for interesting results. This uh, subsection demonstrates the different impacts of damping and frequency of a simple bump. So you can see that when I press bump, if I have a very uh, strong damping like the cat at the top, well, I'm not going to move very far. If I have a very low damping like that, cloud at the middle, well, I'm going to move much more. And so every time you're working on a bump, consider your damping, consider your frequency to find the exact value you like. Of course, the bump amount is the third factor in that equation. This also works for 3D. And so you can have basically as many springs as you want. So this is the same as before, but now on free axis you can also bump like before. And this isn't even limited to position. Uh, I can tie any value I want to a spring, right? It can be um, the X, Y, Z position of an object, but it can be its rotation, it can be scale, uh, its color, everything. So in this case, I have different um, springs and I have one to control the scale, for example. So you can see that every time I move, I get a very bouncy scale and I could also force a crazy rotation. There we go. So the bump, uh, the bump impacts the rotation. And just tweaking these values, I can get very interesting results. I'm going to mute the sound for now. This one shows that you can use springs for much more than just uh, position. So for example, light intensity. In this case, every time I press that button, I bump the intensity. This works for vignettes. This works for the color of an image. In this case, the background here. Uh, also works for audio source pitch. So I'm gonna bring back the music for a while. <laughs> This is very fun. Uh, you can do that with animator speed, text size, uh, image fill, color grading, material property. In this case, I'm boosting the emission of a material. And fill comes with 70 springs. Um, I think a bit more now. A bit more than 70 springs controlling pretty much everything. If you're used to feedbacks, you'll find springs for pretty much every um, aspects of things you can control with feedbacks and the best thing is you can create a new spring is le in less than a minute for any of your custom classes for example and this last one just has a tiny sausage moving randomly um so springs springs are pretty cool so again there's going to be more videos covering the more advanced stuff but very quickly just two ways to set up springs in feel here I am in a very simple scene, basically empty. I have a cube. What I'm going to do first is go here and type mm spring squash and stretch. That's the property I want to move on that spring. And then I'm going to add, let's say, a button. 
I'm going to put that over here. And when I click that button, so on click here, I'm going to drag my cube and I'm going to say I want to bump random that cube. I'm going to press play. And when I press the button, you can see that I'm randomly squash and stretching my cube. And that's it. From there, I could just go here and tweak the different values. So for example, we've seen the damping, we've seen the frequency. You can see that I get now a very, very different result. Maybe I need a bit more damping than that. That's it. Now let's have a look at a second way to add springs. Uh, this is field, right? So we have access to the very, very cool MMF player. I'm going to create an empty object, uh, name it my MMF player, and I'm going to add a MMF player to it. All right. And here you can see that if I go to transform, where I have many ways to control the transforms of an object, I have a Position spring, rotation spring, scale spring, squash and stretch spring. I'm going to pick that one. Simply uh, drag my cube into its target, press play, three clicks. I didn't count, maybe a bit more. And when I press play, that's it. It just works. And I can tweak the damping and press play again. And now I have a very bouncy cube. Right. And of course, I can call that from anything from my gameplay to a button to anything I want. And because field comes with that many springs to control pretty much everything, I can, of course, control these springs using my MMF player. So, for example, on my main camera, I could add a uh, MM spring camera field of view, which, as you can guess, controls the field of view of the camera. So now on my MMF player, if I go here, I have all these springs. Uh, in this case, I know it's a float. Field of view is float value. And I can just drag my target spring into that, press play. I think I'm going to go with a bigger bump amount, uh, 1,000 maybe. And you can see that when I press play, well, it looks like the thing is scaling, but it's actually just the camera. Um, you can see that the camera isn't moving, the cube is not moving, it's only the field of view. And uh, in just a few clicks, I've added control over that. And of course, I could also override the damping and the frequency. And it just works. So that's it. That's uh, your introduction to springs in field. Uh, I hope you will like this video. If you do, I will definitely make more and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye.